put XRP get to $10,000. Let's look at the facts. Since XRP is only worth 48 cents right now, it will take a long time for it to hit $10,000 but it's not impossible to reach this goal. Some people think that Ripple's XRP could pass SWIFT, which would put it in the five-figure range. David Schwartz, Ripple's chief technology officer, has hinted that XRP will soon get improvements that could have a big effect on its market price. Recent events have been very encouraging. Recent wins in the CC lawsuit, updates to UM, and other important developments point to major banks quickly adopting XRP. Historical data shows that when institutional backing goes up, or major banks start using XRP, it has a big effect on its price. For example, when XRAPID was first released in early 2018, the value of XRP went up by over 1,800%, but it hasn't been able to reach that high point again. XRAPID, which was made to replace SWIFT, is still a big reason for XRP's growth. In July 2023, a landmark ruling said that XRP was not a security, which gave the community a lot of hope and led to another rally. Because XRP is faster and cheaper than SWIFT, it has a good chance of replacing SWIFT in the future. In the near future, the focus is on building strong relationships and encouraging widespread use of XRP so that the lofty $10,000 goal may be reached. As always, welcome back to Coins Alert, the place to go for all things XRP. The cross-chain bridge is an important part of this technology that is often ignored. David Schwartz is the best person to talk about what it can do. Now guys, pay attention as he talks about the cool new features and functions of this amazing technology. The XLS38D proposed standard will let tokens from one blockchain be locked in an account on the XRP ledger while the same number of tokens are released on a different blockchain. This will make the XRP ledger more useful and widespread. The team has changed the design of XLS38D to make it better for users and to allow multiple bridges per door account for libraries, explorers and witness servers. Let me take a moment to talk about why I think these side chains and cross chain links are important. You can pay with the XRP Ledger main network. It's where XRP lives, but you can also use it for other things. Of course, it's not possible for everyone to be able to do everything they want to do on a single layer one. There will always be a limit and some people will want to do more deals than that. Some people are going to want more computer power. There will be people who want very skilled translators that need a lot of resources. It's possible to store only so much and adding something to the XRP record mainnet comes with some costs. Every XRP ledger mainnet node has to store and forward transactions that are added to the XRP ledger. This makes a limited resource that we can only split so far. It's a lot, but it's already full. Whatever it can hold, that's all it has. No matter what skills it has, it will also need to be able to do other things. Level 1 will never be everything to everything, to everyone. We need asset portability so that XRP isn't limited to the XRP ledger and other given assets aren't limited to their home ledgers. If we don't want that to be a big problem and break up the community, that's what we need. Because you need to be able to put real value on a ledger in order to work with it in a different way. That will stop people from coming up with new ideas if they have to make a new token stablecoin or build the whole asset system from scratch. It's also great for trying out things that could be useful on the main network. Hooks is a good example of something you might not want to put on the main network right away because of those trade-offs. I'll talk more about hooks later. That being said, no matter how good you think it is, it comes with some costs. Adopting it on the main net and hoping that the trade-offs work out in our favor would be very risky. You have to be very, very sure of yourself before you risk hurting the major network. Cross-chain bridges on these side chains make it easier to show that a technology works with real money in the real world. You can also show how it affects things like network stability, fees, and resource use. Then you can make a much stronger case for adding it to the main net. That, along with some of the other things I'm going to talk about, will make it possible for a lot more growth. It was David Schwartz who make some strong points. First, I can't stress enough how important it is to test these features on a side chain. Before they use new technology, most financial institutions want to see proof that it works. Showing that these features work with real-time data and transaction records from regular users gives a lot of confidence. Also, the very low transaction fees, often just pennies per transaction, make this even more appealing. David Schwartz will give us more information, including specific examples of these side chains, which will help us understand how they can be used in real life even better. A sidechain is something like the EVM sidechain. 
EVM sidechain is great because it's simple to build on for people who know how to build smart contracts on EVM. The Peer Assist developer teams have been working hard on both this blockchain and the Mainext RPL blockchain at the same time. It's now live on DevNet. That's where developers can check out how things work before they are put into use on the mainnet. A bridge links the sidechain to the XRPL sidechain DevNet. We need to make this autonomous bridge work with the XRPL network. It does this by using the XLS38D cross-chain bridging feature. There you have it, a bridge between the development network and the test version of the sidechain. Adding XLS38D to the XRPL mainnet is the next step. A new EVM sidechain can be added to the XRP Legend mainnet once the validator community agrees to the change. Of course, other sidechains can do the same thing. Everything in this system should be ready to go in the real world so it can handle real world use cases and scale. There will be more than one way to solve the problem. Nodes will be run by different people in the XRPL group. What we're talking about are huge steps forward chances to shine. We're seeing improvements like faster throughput, less memory usage, and better transaction handling across the whole network. With these changes, it will be a lot easier for big banks to use our technology. David will say more about these points and give important insights. A node operating system is also an important part of this technology because it lets almost anyone with the right tool set up a validator type node. In a way similar to other blockchain systems, this setup will help the network work. We also want to be able to add new things. We might want to add hooks to mainnet. We couldn't add a feature that kind of uses resources if we were already at full capacity for memory storage and IO. The IM needs money and time. The NFT tool needs resources to work. We can't add features if our technology has already done everything it can do. This means that these changes are very important. States that are stable and strong are on the other side. This has to do with not getting more bugs. There will be bugs in both old and new code. It's not okay for the bugs to get worse. So we fix some problems with estimating the size of nodes, adding up and gateway funds. To stop replay attempts, we added the network ID field. We also updated the API to make it harder to accidentally hurt yourself by not taking the seed and the public key. Let's face the truth. Taking into account that even a joke coin like Pepcoin went up over 9,326%. What might XRP be able to do in a bear market? XRP isn't just another cryptocurrency. It's a huge change that could totally change the banking and cross-border payment sector, which is the biggest financial sector in the world. When you put it that way, it doesn't seem impossible to make gains of 9,000% or even hit a price target of $10,000, especially when you think about how much Pepcoin has grown. It could be said that XRP has had plenty of time to hit these heights, but hasn't yet. But it's important to think about the outside factors that are at play, especially the SESI's close watch, which has greatly limited its partnership options. Now that the law makes it clear that XRP is not a security and the SESI is losing other crypto cases, the stage is set for a huge rise in usage. Now, XRP's future depends on how well it is accepted and used by big banks. This environment needs people like us to keep it going. We help XRP and the XRPL succeed and stay alive by choosing to bank with institutions that back them. The goal for XRP to hit $10,000 might be possible if we all work together. Do not forget that I am not a professional financial advisor. The information in these movies is only meant to be entertaining. Before making any financial decisions, I always tell my viewers to do their own study and talk to professionals. Thanks for listening. Give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the follow button if you liked it. Also make sure the alerts are on so you know right away when I post something new. In the next movie, I can't wait to catch up with you. Be careful.